What's going on dudes? Nick here or RG Gaming and welcome to the Bro Zone. Guys, today I've got something really special for you which involves all this beautiful stuff you see in front of you here. And today we are making something very, very special and that is going to be mead. And we're going to be brewing it in these gallon glass jugs. Now, this is my first time ever doing this and I've watched a ton of videos, but we all know how videos can be wrong. So we're gonna find out a lot of stuff. As this goes on, I'll probably try to do another update video in the future, especially when we go to uncork this stuff and bottle it, cause that could be pretty cool. But the first thing that we need to do is obviously make sure everything is completely sanitized. If it's not sanitized, then you're gonna have a lot of issues uh, and it could pretty much ruin the entire batch of mead. Right now, I've got a little pot over here with just a little bit of water in there and it's actually gone cold so I'm gonna heat it back up on my little portable stove over there. Basically what I'm trying to do is heat up the honey a little bit so that it'll be a little bit easier to get out of the bottle. So let me go ahead and turn this on. There we go. While the honey's heating up I want it to heat up slowly. I don't want to just like boil the crap out of it or anything like that. So obviously I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. I'll probably turn it on and off a few times. Just keep the water at the right temperature so it doesn't destroy the honey. I've got two different types of honey, which is gonna be cool because now I can actually have two different samples to see whether like wildflower honey or whether standard honey tastes better. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna give that another minute and probably turn it off to make sure it don't get too hot. But in the meantime, I've got this, which uh, shout out to Gamer Wolf real quick because I was, I was scrambling. I'm like, oh man, I need something to sanitize my stuff in. And he sent me this perfect clear tote. And right now I've got about two and a half gallons of water in it and I've got my sanitizer. So this stuff, Star San, it's supposed to be really good for this. And uh, it's one ounce per five gallons of water. They've actually got a little mark, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, uh, in the middle for a half ounce, which would be two and a half, which is what we have here. So I'm going to open this up, take the half ounce and pour it in here. And this is what we're gonna use to sanitize everything that we're gonna be using here. So obviously this thing's brand new, never been used before. So now I gotta stab it open. Um, but guys, you need to be careful if this is what you're going to use because this is an acid-based cleaner. Acids can be very dangerous. This is not something you wanna leave out where kids or pets or anyone can really get into. So let me just get the perfect amount in here. There we go, half ounce. And then we're just gonna pour that in our water there. Perfect. Oh, and we, look at that, see how quickly our unwatched pot boils. So, an unwatched pot does boil quicker. We just did a little bit of science there. And uh, <laughs> it's a little hotter than I want it to be. But the bottles are also only half submerged. So it's gonna be, it won't really be an issue. It's not gonna overcook the honey. In fact, I could probably go and mix it up a little bit. All right, so right now I've just taken a little spoon and I'm stirring this up a little bit. Basically trying to make sure it's all mixed together and it, you, you can probably tell when I pick this thing up in a second The water has turned uh, Pretty much translucent you can see light through it, but it's definitely not clear anymore So now this stuff is ready to start sanitizing So basically what we're gonna have to do is anything that's gonna be involved in the process today needs to be cleaned. so We've got our little bubbler system here, which allows the co2 to escape. So we've got these and I'm going to take all these parts and just get them completely submerged in here. Drop that in. These things really don't want to <laughs> fill up with the water. It can take anywhere from 30 seconds to about like five minutes for this stuff to work. Plastic stuff, I'm not going to leave in there as long. The glass, I really don't think it's going to hurt it too much. So we're just going to let that stuff get in there. So now I'm going to continue disinfecting everything. Uh, I've got my gallon jugs here. And I'm just going to fill this thing up, let it sit for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the other plastic pieces out. So like I said, I don't want them to get damaged by any part of this process. Now I've got a little bit of paper down there, and that's mainly just to kind of keep it away from the desk. The desk isn't super sanitized, and I guess neither, neither is the paper, but it's better than just being left right on the desk. So there we go. So get all the water out that I can, and let that stuff sit. And we're just going to let this bottle sit in here for a little bit as well. I was gonna make sure to move it around and make sure everything on there gets completely saturated. We're gonna do the same thing to the other bottle here. All right, so right now I'm just mixing up the honey a little bit because obviously the bottom's super hot from being in the water and the top is not. So I'm just going to mix these things around. If you try to shake them, it's gonna be pretty hard, but if you kind of whip them side to side like that, 
then it actually helps force all the liquid inside there to get mixed a lot easier. So now I'm gonna put that back in the water. The water's still pretty hot, so I'm gonna leave that there for a little bit more. According to the manufacturer, this stuff is not supposed to be harmful. Like those bubbles and stuff that are left are not supposed to be harmful, but I guess you never really are 100% sure until you try it and either live or die. So uh, I feel like this thing's been around long enough where it should be safe. So we're basically just gonna let this sit around for a little bit and I'm gonna leave it upside down to try to drain out any excess water from the inside uh, while the other bottle is getting clean. All right, so we've got our two perfectly disinfected bottles. And from this point on, as long as you're handling them from the outside, it shouldn't be a problem. You just don't wanna be doing anything inside of these bottles because the inside is where everything is gonna go. And there's, you can still see there's a few little bubbles in there. But like I said, everything I've read said that that's fine. So I guess we're gonna leave it and see how things go. Now we've got two gallons of water here. It's, this is just uh, natural spring water. You can use tap water, but from what I've heard, it has chlorine, which can mess with the yeast. Uh, so you either have to get the chlorine out or run the risk of killing off your yeast. And then you have just basically honey water because obviously if there's no yeast, then you're not going to get any fermentation. So what I need to do now is I need to make some water so I can mix the yeast together and get it ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a quarter cup of water and pour in one of those packets. Now I wanna make sure the water is to temperature before I pour in the packet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it up and you want it roughly, I think somewhere between like 95 and 100 degrees, which if you don't know exactly where that's at, think about it this way. I believe most hot tubs are around like 100 to 105. So I'm sure if you've ever felt a hot tub, you put your hand in and it's warm, but it doesn't burn you. So if you get the water too hot where you can't put your hand in it, then obviously it's a little too hot. Now, <laughs> be careful if you're going to try it that way. You can either get a thermometer, that would be that would be easier. But if you are like me and you're stubborn, then just get the water hot enough to where um, it starts to feel too warm. If it ever gets too hot, just obviously let it cool down. But that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep periodically checking it until it's the temperature that I think it should be. I don't think we're gonna use all this water, but just to make sure that we're doing things equally, that's probably about, about as much as we'd need, but we'll put a little bit in from there as well. So now we've got our water in here. I'm gonna throw it on our stove here, and hopefully this one <laughs> won't start to boil without me watching it. So we're gonna put this down a little bit and I'm gonna keep periodically testing that to see if it's up to temperature. In the meantime, we can take about half of the water from each of these jugs and pour it into here, into each of these. So fill it about halfway up. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. We're going to fill these up with water. So I'm just gonna pour that in here and it doesn't have to be exactly half. You just wanna make sure you leave enough room of air in there so that we can shake this up here in a second. So I'm just gonna pour this and try not to drop it everywhere. Okay, so that's about half in this one. And then I'm gonna do the same to here. So I'm just gonna set this one on the table and make it a little bit easier. There we go. So we've got each one filled about halfway with water. And now it is time to add in our honey. So I'm gonna check the temperature of the water here in the pot. Still a little bit too hot, which is good because it gives us time to do the hardest part. <laughs> Basically, we have to get all the honey inside of these jugs. Now, the reason I heated it up was because cold honey flows extremely slow. And if you heat it up, it loosens it a bit and it will actually make it flow a lot easier. So it'll still all come out even if it's cold, but if it's warmed up a little bit, then it'll be a lot easier. Now I'm gonna see if I can pour this in without using a little squeeze cap. It's probably gonna be a bit tricky, but... Oh, there we go. So this one here, I think is just more of like a traditional honey. And the other one over there is a wildflower honey. And I guess I could have showed the difference between that. Uh, let's see if we can do it real quick. You see the wildflower honey is a lot darker than the traditional honey. So I'm just going to pour this all in here. And then I'm going to put the cap back on, leave it upside down to try to get the rest of the honey that's in there to kind of fade down to the bottom. And then we'll try to use as much of it as we can. Now, each one of these jars is, I believe, about two pounds of honey. I know a lot of mead recipes call for... I think somewhere between like two to three pounds. But the reason I'm gonna use two is because I feel like if I put the third pound in there, it's just gonna get a little too sweet. I'm not a huge sweet fan. So I'm just gonna do the two pounds and I guess see how that turns out. And if I feel it needs to be sweeter, then I'll add the third one in the future. So we've got that in there. And now I'm gonna take this and do the same thing over here and get this one filled 
with the wildflower honey. Um, and like I said, making making it warm definitely sped up the process of pouring this out quite a bit. All right, so that's about as much honey as we're going to get out of this one here. Um, at least till it collects on the bottom. So I'm gonna let these bottles, I'm just gonna tip them upside down like that, let them collect in the cap, see if we get a little bit more honey out of it. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to take these rubber stoppers real quick, put them in there. Now they've got a little hole on the top, so they're not waterproof. But basically what I'm gonna do is put my thumb over the hole and start to shake it. Or maybe I'll even put my palm over there. And what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing up the honey, but also at the same time, it's incorporating air into the mixture. Uh, and air oxygen is, at this stage, one of the key components that you need to have. Now, the reason we use the bubblers is because once you get the process started, once everything's mixed up and ready to go, you don't want any more air getting in there. In fact, if you get oxygen in there, it can actually ruin your mead. So you can see, we've got a lot of nice oxygen in there now. Um, but like I said, once it starts, you have to completely seal it. So if you don't, then you'll run into issues and your mead, I think it'll just go bad. I don't even think it'll work. So that one's nice and mixed up. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this one over here. Wow, and it actually built up a little bit of pressure. Um, so again, this is the wildflower. And you can probably see, I don't know how easily you can see, but it's definitely a lot darker than the traditional honey. So I'm just gonna keep mixing this up a little bit. And by then I think our water should be cool enough to be able to mix in our yeast. Okay, yeah, that's about the right temperature. I can keep my hand in it now and it's not burning. Um, so I think we're good to put our yeast in. Like I said, this is enough for five gallons and we got two. I could probably just use half the pack, but I'm pretty sure once you open it, it probably goes bad. So I'm just gonna pour, I'm just gonna pour it all in. Screw it. I mean, I think from what I've read, if you have extra yeast, I think it speeds up the process. It's not gonna make it any stronger or weaker, but um, it will um, speed up the rate at which it consumes everything. So I'm gonna use my little spoon here, get that stirred together, and I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit, get fully rehydrated in here. Well, actually, it's funny. If you look at the foam on the top of these, you can see the regular honey is whiter and the other the wildflower honey almost has like a golden color to it that's interesting i'll be curious to see if it actually makes a difference in how it tastes because they, they look different but maybe they all taste the same i have no idea and it looks like our yeast has pretty much rehydrated i'm not seeing any more clumps or anything in here so i'm guessing this is probably ready to pour in now i'm gonna try this like i said i'm gonna try to pour it as equally as i can but this is probably gonna get messy as well. Okay, I was gonna use the package to make like a little bit of a, a little bit of a funnel, but uh, probably wouldn't work out that well. All right, so now we're just gonna pour in our yeast. Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect, but it doesn't matter because we're using so much extra yeast to begin with. And what I'm gonna do now as well is I'm gonna put the rubber stopper back in and I'm going to give it another vigorous shake. So I'm gonna shake each one of these up again. I wish I would have saved the yeast for last, because then I could have made a joke, last but not yeast. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So we're just gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take the little bit of extra honey that we have in each of these bottles and try to squirt it in. It's time to take the rest of our water and fill our bottles pretty much to the top. So we're just gonna pour this in here. And we should be able to use all the available water. Probably have a little bit left over. There we go. I'm just going to leave it to about there. And I guess I will... Eh, let's finish this up from here. I mean, it's all the same water at the end of the day anyways. There we go. Get a little bit more from here. Now there is one step that you might have seen on the table from the beginning and you've probably been wondering what it's for. I'm going to put a few secret ingredients in. So right here, I've got a little ramekin full of raisins. And basically, I'm just gonna take a few of these and put inside of there as well. So probably about like eight to 10 raisins. Now, from what I've read, this actually acts as food for the yeast. So provides like a little bit extra boost, I think later on, because obviously right now it's feasting on the sugars of the, the honey itself. But we're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna grab the cap, try to give it a little shake. It's not doing much because there's really no air volume left up top. I just kind of want to get that in there. And 
This one probably needs a little bit more water. Just a little bit. There we go, now they're about the same. I want them to be as close as possible, and that way, if I mess something up, I'll know kind of what went wrong. So now's the point where I want to push these rubber seals into the jar to make sure they got a nice fit. So you want them to be fit in here, because at this point, we're not really going to be taking these out for a while. We're going to take the top part of this, the top part of the air bubbler. I'm just going to get any of that acid water out. Put this in here to give it a nice seal. And I'm going to put a little bit of water up top here. So now this is done once I add the water. So again, get the water out of here, put that in there. I think it pretty much completes the seal at that point. Put the little float in, take some of our extra water. And there we go. I actually put a little bit too much in there. You're only supposed to fill it about halfway up. Um, but the extra water will fall out anyway. So there we go. Now what we do is we put these caps back on top. And what happens is as the yeast starts to break down the sugars in the honey, it'll produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. So what's going to happen is, after these sit for a while, this carbon dioxide will start being released. Now, if we had these bottles sealed, eventually it would build up enough pressure to either where the cap blows off or the bottle itself shatters, and we don't want that. So the bubbler system allows the CO2 to bubble up around the little cone and out without any air going back into it. Because like I said, at this point now, if air gets inside of it, then you're going to end up with a... I think it'll either... Either it won't ferment, it'll kill the, the yeast, or it could grow bacteria, or something like that. I'd have to look it up to be specific, but there's a reason everybody does it. And honestly, it's a quick Google search away. So if you really want to know, go ahead and check that out. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, because they are done, and I'm going to go put them in a dark spot. So obviously, my office is not that dark. They're clear bottles, so they're not going to block out the sun's rays or anything like that. So you want to keep them somewhere sheltered from the sun, because the sun will damage this as well. So I'm going to put this in a dark spot in my basement, where it'll stay cool. Uh, not too cold, but um, it'll stay cool, and it'll stay out of any direct sunlight. So that's basically it. This is all it took to make mead. You just basically mix the water with honey and the uh, yeast and a few raisins. Put it in here into sanitary bottles, sanitized bottles, and now we wait. So I believe it's either after like three or four weeks, you can take it out of these bottles, filter it, and try to clarify it a little bit, and then put it back, let it sit for a while longer, and then you can bottle it. So when we bottle it, it will be fun, but that's another video. So hopefully you guys had fun with this. It's I know it's something completely different than what we've done before, but that's the idea behind the bro zone. So if you want to see more stuff like that, like that like this and possibly future videos of actually tasting this stuff when it's done then make sure to click the subscribe button it should be somewhere down in that area so you'll you'll find it I, I think you're smart enough but I look forward to seeing you guys in the future videos let me know anything I should know about this if you guys have done this before let me know if I'm doing things right or wrong because it'll definitely help me and uh, I'm excited to see how this stuff turns out so thank you guys so much for watching I had a lot of fun. Hopefully it turns out well, and we'll see you coming up in the future. So, till next time, guys, you've been watching the Bro Zone. Goodbye, everybody.